Hi, me and Mr. Gigi just did a pick a hand episode over on his channel, so you should check it out after this video because it's very, very funny. Thank you. Bye. Oh my god, hi, hello there, hi, hello. It's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. Not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, it's when I do a little something on my channel called Bat Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on, and I'm gonna put my makeup on today. You're welcome. <laughs> ah! Caffeine, drugs. Welcome to the shenanigans. This week we're talking about a movie that is both bad but good because it was allowed to be as bad as it is and it feels like representation. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. We're looking at more shitty books turned shitty movies. It's not passion flicks, but it might as well be excited about it because I need some romance in my life. I want to be more delusional. It's gotten to the point that my friends have thought of ambushing me with blind dates. Please don't do that, Faye. I'm actually going to lunch with her after this and we better be the only people there. But yeah, we're living vicariously through poorly written media. <laughs> what else is new? So uh, before we get started, Take it over to Avril Kinney. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Avril Kinney and today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit delivery service that offers you fresh, delicious, and healthy meals delivered straight to the comfort of your own home. It's pre-portioned, pre-thought out, pre-planned, pre-shopped for. So it takes all the annoying hassle out of planning for a meal, shopping for the ingredients, cause Lord knows I hate the grocery store. If I can avoid it, especially those big ones. I'm okay with the small ones, but the big ones? Oh, okay, let me go get turmeric, but first I gotta past the tire aisle, <laughs> like, but I'm able to get delicious, unique meals on the table in about 30 minutes, sometimes way less than that. They've recently started doing these like 10, 15 minute lunches. So good. I had like a, a, a guacamole, chicken, cheese, sandwich type situation, fire. Uh, and I just feel like HelloFresh takes the hassle out of cooking. It uh, it just makes me generally, even when I'm not using HelloFresh, a better cook, cause I kind of know what to look for. They come with recipe cards that are easy to follow, but if you're like me and like a little bit of chaos, I just skim it. <laughs> it's also helped me cut down on eating out as much. I save money that way. So if you would like to check out HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com. Use code Kenny50 at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. Big thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. So today I am, like I just said, I'm about to go see my friend for lunch, ow. So we're not doing like a particularly interesting beat today, sorry. Um, whenever I leave my house after filming a particularly involved makeup look, people just wanna talk to you. And I, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> so last week we talked about Ben and Arthur, which is a complete mess. Also, I had to re-upload. So if you haven't checked out the video, please check it out. If you already checked it out the first time, please check it out again. My views are down because of it, my bad, sorry. <laughs> but yes, it's, oh God. And by the way, not just because I had to re-upload, but you guys really need to see that video. You guys really need to see Ben and Arthur, honestly, it is a masterpiece. It's very Neil Breen-esque, very The Room, but gay. Also, I went to see The Room in theaters a few days ago. That was the first time I'd ever seen The Room in like a collective um, because it was the 20th year anniversary. Didn't love the audience that was there. They were actually very annoying. Like I know there's things that you're supposed to do in the theater, if you're watching The Room, you're supposed to shout spoons, throw spoons, hi Mark, I know the things that we're supposed to do. But like one guy was particularly very annoying, <laughs> like the whole movie. The, the theater was virtually empty. This is very stupid. I know this is a dumb thing to complain about, but the theater was virtually empty and this guy, came and sat right next to me. Maybe that was his assigned seat in the theater, but I never go to my assigned seat. So I'm looking like, hello. Oh, but yeah, Ben and Arthur. So if you wanna check that out, it'll be linked up above, or you can check it out in the Bad Movies and a Beat playlist. So like I said, today we're talking about love. Still, I mean, last week was about, was it about love? <laughs> it was the desire for it to be about love, but people were homophobic, so it, uh wasn't meant to be and it was more of a like a Greek tragedy more than anything. But today we're talking about another one of those like YA books. I'm pretty sure it was a book 
turn film but this time is ethnic and that's the only reason i wanted to watch it because i was like oh wow this is another after-esque movie but particularly the first after when it was still taking itself way too seriously that's what this movie is it's meant to be like a real movie it's meant to be like like a drama <laughs> it's trash but the main characters neither of which are white look at us today we are talking about Perfect Addiction that came out, if I'm not mistaken, this year, if not this year, last year. I saw like a trailer of it. Someone recommended it probably on Twitter or somewhere like that. And I saw the trailer and it looked terrible, but again, it was like two people of color as the main characters. And I was like, you know what? Will it be bad? Yes. Will I give it a chance? Absolutely. Cause again, I love trash. A win is a win. A win is a win, what can I say? It's kind of like the first after movie when they were still taking themselves very seriously mixed with beautiful disaster because for some reason YA loves an underground fighting ring. <laughs> I don't know what that is about. When a successful MMA trainer discovers that her boyfriend, the reigning champion, has been cheating on her, she sets out to get revenge by training the one man capable of dethroning him his arch nemesis. What begins as payback quickly turns into a complicated and steamy love triangle. Right? Very YA, very, very YA. And it has everything that you would expect from this genre, particularly this age group. It's like 30 year olds playing college sophomores. Again, for some reason there's a fight club. What college? <laughs> Y'all go into, was there a fight club? But the only difference is that this one, the main character is Afro Latina? question mark i could check but that would be another step <laughs> and an asian dude so i was like oh wait we got some color all right i like that more more of that little new cut it's a new color like again i knew it was gonna be trash but damn and it is it is infuriating and confusing whoever wrote the story has never seen two people talk let alone be in like a very emotionally charged conflict what would theoretically be upsetting situations that are happening the main character the main actress um i don't know if it's the direction or the script or something her performance is so lacking in the rage that i feel is appropriate for this storyline especially if we're going full melodrama so it was wanting certainly not the first or the last time these type of movies have been poorly acted and poorly written and poorly made so and it's good for my business so like I keep them coming so uh yeah this is uh perfect addiction i forgot what it was called because they all blend together <laughs> this is perfect addiction 2023 so the film opens with us meeting our main character her name is sienna and sienna works alongside her sort of mentor slash father figure named julian at a local gym, a boxing gym. And this is where a lot of local MMA fighters are training to go pro. She has a little sister named Beth and a best friend named Brent, and they all go to the same local community college. And that's basically the extent of her social circle in the beginning. That is until she meets Jax. Jax is trouble. Jax is a boxer. And he had heard that she trains uh, people that are going pro into MMA or whatever. Kickboxing. Is that what MMA stands for? Mor martial? What does... Hey Siri, what does MMA stand for? Mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts. That would make sense. Anyway, uh, she, she trains mixed martial artists. Um, <laughs> and he's like, I heard you're very good. And I want to hire you as a trainer. But also... Not just that, because he does have a bit of a reputation as a bad boy, as a womanizer, a ladies man, and one to be known to mix business and pleasure. And Serena, Sienna, is like, I wanna keep my distance, I wanna keep things professional. And she does do that for like 30 seconds on screen until they start dating. Um, I'm so hungry, but I'm trying to save space for hot pot. It's all you can eat hot pot. So I need the space, but I'm starving. <laughs> I got a few hours, man. I got to figure something out. The last thing I want to do is get there and fill up on rice. I would be pissed. Last thing you do is go to Hot Pot and fill up on carbs. Absolutely not. But Jack soon makes a name for himself in, you know, professional, semi-professional leagues. 
and he becomes their particular fighting federation's best boxer. He's like a champion. He's amazing. And a big component of him getting that good is with Sienna's help. She's an incredible trainer, an amazing athlete in her own right, though she does not fight. And everything was going great for them. That is until Jax ends up getting injured in a motorcycle accident that nearly ruins his fighting career because he couldn't really walk for a while. He had to do rehabilitation on his knee. Yeah, it was rough, but they ended up getting through it mostly with Sienna's help because she like nursed him back to health basically. And this nursing him back to health made them that much stronger or at least in Sienna's eyes, that much stronger. And now she was fully devoted. She's head over heels. They've been in through some shit, man. Before you know it, he's not only fully recovered, he's better than ever. He's winning championships, almost as if he was never injured at all. And things seem to be going great. Seem to be. <laughs> that is until one day after picking up some like protein powder and supplements and stuff for him for his training, she comes home to find that he is cheating on her. In, he, like he's in the middle of cheating on her with her sister. <laughs> I was gagged. They had me. I was like, that's how you open a movie. That's how you start a movie, because I'm hooked. I'll be damned. Nurse him back to health, and he cheat on you. Not just cheat on you with your sister. That's crazy. <laughs> that's wild. That's insane. Okay, but that's how you start a movie. That's the beginning of the movie. So she leaves heartbroken, as you'd imagine. Or you'll have to imagine, because um, <laughs> I'm not saying that the actress for Sienna is bad. Again, I don't know if this was direction. I don't know what this was, but at no point do I really get the anger that would be proportionate to this type of betrayal. You know what I mean? I don't, she just feels a little bit held back, more reserved than I think is appropriate for this uh, out of pocket ass situation, especially because Rest assured, Jax is very cartoonish evil, so he doesn't really regret uh, continually f***ing her sister. So I just feel like we needed something more like waiting to exhale adjacent, like burn his shit. I know you have a bum knee and you expect me to not go I, Tanya. Maybe I'm just angry. I mean, all my big three are uh, insane. Definitely gonna blame it on astrology because all of my shortcomings as a personality, I will blame on that. But yeah, she doesn't get angry enough for me. And spoiler, there will be no point in this movie where I feel like we're gonna get a satisfactory amount of anger from her. I will be happy to give you a bit of my anger uh, upon watching it just so that you can feel a bit more viscerally satisfied. You're welcome. That's why you come here <laughs> for the feeling. Like she never lights anything on fire. She don't curb stomp him. Not that I'm condoning violence. YouTube daddy. <laughs> I would never, okay. At least she has school to help her distract from her sister and her now ex's betrayal. But one of the many things that are adding insult to injury with him cheating on her is that now that they're broken up, she doesn't have a place to stay. Oh, hell no. I got cheated on and I'm homeless and you didn't burn nothing down. I'm sorry. If I'm gonna be homeless, so are you bitch. Burn this shit down jokingly. YouTube daddy. <laughs> yeah, never condoning violence. Just in jest. But Brent ends up letting her know that he has a friend who's currently looking for a roommate. He's only charging 250 a month. So if she's really interested, then he'll let the guy know. And she's like, 250 a month, what's wrong with him? <laughs> like, what's wrong with the space? What's going on? And he's like, well, he's complicated. You know, this type of shit, YA polls. It's like, he has to have a dark past, yada, yada, yada. So he, he has that. So she goes over to his place, finding out that his apartment is literally in the basement. The hallway looks very horror movie, serial killer-esque. But when she knocks on the door, it's a hot Asian dude that's standing there shirtless. This is Caden. And immediately, you know that we're having to start off a proper enemies to lovers arc. So she's like, hey, I heard that you're looking for a roommate and I'm interested in living here. I have nowhere to go. And he's like, nah, I don't think it'll be a good fit. He doesn't explain why. I assume it's because 
you know, these types of romance, but you know, he's probably immediately inexplicably attracted to her and he's like, I can't have this temptation in my face, but they don't explain anything at any point in this movie. So maybe they talk about it in the book. He's like, nah, it's not gonna be a good fit. Tries to close the door in her face. She's like, um, I don't have anywhere else to go. And he's like, that sounds like a personal problem and still kicks her out. So she's back at square one. She tries to get more hours to work at the gym. And he's like, we don't have enough people asking for a trainer, so I have nothing for you. Because people are instead enlisting, enlisting? Training with an underground league that has fewer rules and probably makes more money as a fighter, I don't know. Come to find out, one of the big reasons why people aren't coming to this gym as much is because Jax has decided to fight in an underground league, which isn't attracting people to their gym because they wanna train like Jax, the, the champion. And she ends up seeing a flyer showing that Caden, the guy that she wanted to room with, is fighting him that night. So for whatever reason, whether it be curiosity or just that weird place where you're very upset, but still inexplicably wanna see your ex, she goes to see the fight. And again, going back to her not being mad enough for me, again, maybe I'm just, and Aries moon Scorpio rising. But Jax comes up to her, cocky as shit, makes these weird vague excuses for continually f-ing her sister. He's still doing it. And again, she's just not mad enough for me. Like I nursed you back to health. You ain't had no knees. Imagine doing this and I know your weakness. I could give your knee a gangster lean and you in my face taunting me about how you f- my sister. I'm sorry. But all she say is like, I don't understand, Jax. Like, how could you do this to me? Like, girl. Like, she gives him a little push, but nah. Sorry. I've, just, I've said it before. I'll say it again. You can definitely cry and beat his ass at the same time. I'm like, come on, get angry. Let the rage flow through you. I got three hours minimum until hot pot. So protein shake. Here we go. Hmm. It's weird. It tastes like cookies and pretzels. But she's like, oh my God, why would you f my little sister? Uh. A mistake is forgetting to pick up dinner. F-ing my little sister is an act of war. Ain't nobody scared of you. Pull out the blitz. So she goes up to the betting counter and places bets that Caden will win against him. So she's taking a bet on the guy who was rude to her, but if it beats this mother I'm cool with it. So she gives her last hundred dollars to bet against Jax. So she goes up to the ring and watches her ex and her enemy fight. And this is where she finds out because Brent is also there that this is actually Brent's adopted brother. Caden is Brent's adopted brother. So she watches him fight and sees all the ways in which Caden is undeniably outmatched by Jax. Considering she's Jax's old trainer, she knows all his strengths, all his weaknesses. And though, again, Caden puts up a good fight, it would seem that he is going to lose if it weren't for the fight getting broken up by police right when he was about to go down. So after the fight, Sienna has officially used up her last hundred dollars. She doesn't want to keep going back to the gym for some reason. I don't know. As long as her boss don't know, I don't see why not. But she's finally reached her rock bottom and she's sleeping at a bus stop in the pouring rain. Girl. (laughs) <laughs> in a way, hell, I'm not burning his house down. So right then though, is when she devises the plan that what she's going to do is go up to Caden. Hey, you suck as a fighter, um, but I can make you not suck. And if you do a rematch with Jax, I can make you win. I'm, I'm saying it funner, but that's essentially what she does. She goes up to him, she's like, I know all of his weaknesses. I know all of his strengths because I was his trainer. Do this for me. And in return, let me stay at your house. And so reluctantly, he does accept. Later at school to further, I guess theoretically further her anger, but again, she doesn't really show it enough for my liking. She sees her sister and Jax making out at the college. Girl, f- both of them. Look, I tried to tell you, but you're not the easiest person to talk to. Girl, I'll head but the f- out you. Again, as she seems to have just generally more patience than I do, uh, and more, I guess, loyalty towards family. She's just like, he's not a good person and leaves. Girl, after staying at Caden's place for maybe a day or two, he tries to silently pay her off so that he doesn't have to continue to stay with her and so that she's done 
doing her job as a trainer, but she's like, no, this is personal. She ends up antagonizing him into some sparring and she takes him down easily because she knows what she's doing. However, cause this is YA, in the midst of doing that, she remembers the times that she got hot and steamy with Jax in the ring. Girl, whatever. And eventually Kaden's like, all right, damn, I guess you are pretty good. So he ends up saying, fine, we can do this. So she's like, okay, I am going to train you. You are training, training. No more eating delicious burgers. Now you're eating protein, isolates. And apparently because this is underground, there's no weight classes. So Jax is significantly bigger than Kaden. So they say they look pretty similar to me, but I don't know. And they're like, Jax can really hurt you. You need to bulk up a little bit. There is a point during this conversation that she ends up saying, just so that we're aware, this is completely professional. I am in no way planning to date another fighter. And he's like, oh, absolutely. Cause you shouldn't date one. And you sure as hell shouldn't date me of all of them. This is a movie, but listen in real life. Like girl, I, I like to act like I can't read or hear. I'm so smart, but so dumb. <laughs> so they started doing this training bright and early 5 a.m. Hell no. Nah. But as you can imagine, this is when they spend more time together. You know, they build a friendship of sorts. So enemies to friends to lovers. And meanwhile, at her original job, boss slash father figure, boss daddy is like, yo sister called and she seems to be really concerned about you. She says, you're not answering like what's going on there. And she was like, don't do it, don't do it. And he's like, well, y'all need to work it out. And it's like, that's why you need to mind your in business, don't do it. Training continues and they hit us with this very subtle reference to her love life in the midst of sparring. Your resting state should be impenetrable. No one gets in, no one can hurt you. Real subtle. Um, even though at no point of this, is she really the person that seems super anti them getting together? Between the two, he's the one that's like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> but she's able to take him out real easily. Again, he has a lot to learn. She thinks back on Jax and how he used to subtly discourage her from becoming a fighter herself and instead nudged her into staying in her place as his trainer and nothing more. And despite these moments of quote unquote anger, she is still having these moments inter interwoven between those where she's like, damn, I wish I could fuck him again. I've been there. <laughs> and you know, sometimes Kate in there too. I get it. <clears throat> as a side note, as usual, whenever there's a good song playing, you know it's during a sex scene. This one was pretty fire, I was a fan. So now it's official, Kaden is signed up for a rematch with Jax. So now we have to go full wax on, wax off, fighting with blindfolds on and shit. But one day Jax comes into the gym and he's again, too fucking comfortable touching and talking to Serena. Sienna, <laughs> why do I keep calling her that? And I would be hella triggered, start crying, bite his Adam's apple out. But that's just me. He's like, I care about you. I got scared, I miss you. And the only reason I'm still fucking your sister is you know, she was there. <laughs> he says something along the lines of that, maybe not quite. He's like, she's easier. I don't know which one's worse. Later, Kaden and Jax do get into a bit of a tussle outside of the gym. And Jax says some ignorant shit. Forgot how sexy you are when you're angry. Almost as sexy as your sister. <laughs> and Sienna finally does something. Again, not enough. <sighs> maybe I should get a massage. I feel tense. <laughs> She hits the mirror or something off of his motorcycle. Again, I want blood, but. So now she feels, I guess, a little bit more like she got her anger out. So she's like, I'm kind of like focusing more on Kaden now. She starts trying to decorate the basement <laughs> and making it more of a home. And of course, this is where we have some of the proper sexual tension uh, being shown towards each other. It's kind of hot or whatever. I guess we're just assuming that's lead free though. So Brent is engaged to be married and for some reason, he thought it was a good idea to bring both Sienna and the sister to be a part of the wedding. Then fuck you too. There ain't no way, like, there's no way. There's no way in hell you can be my friend and say like, hey, I love y'all both. Just like get over her fucking your boyfriend and continually him as we speak because this is my big date. I'm sorry, I just, that's rude. You don't care about me, period. Y'all different than me, y'all don't hold enough grudges. And the sister Beth is like, I'm sorry you feel betrayed. 
but it's been so hard living in your shadow. And he gave me attention. So I don't know, Sienna, whether it's she's a pushover or just good natured, I don't know the difference sometimes. She's more focused on like her concern for her sister. She's like, he's a bad dude. He degrades you. He's using you for an ego boost. And she's like, he loves me. I'm so sorry, but I can't do anything to get you to understand that he's a terrible person because I didn't get it when I was dating him. So you'll figure it out. You're gonna have to. But after this exchange, as you'd imagine, she's pretty sad. And Caden's there for her. And he's like, do you want to talk about it? And she's like, I can't believe my sister did what she did to me. I can't believe that she saw him gaslight and manipulate me and she still wants to be with him. That's crazy. At some point during this conversation, she notices a tattoo on his arm and it was very choppily put together. I don't know who made that flow of conversation, but anyway. And when she notices it, he clams up and shuts down and he's like, you don't need to see that, whatever. He gets really weird about it. It's strange if it's a secret considering he's constantly showing his arms <laughs> if you didn't want people to see this tattoo and it's particularly sentimental, like why? Okay. But Sienna takes it personally that he won't open up to her. She's like, "What? what is going on? Eventually he apologizes to her, gives this whole speech about how he cares about her and it kills him that he can't give her everything that she needs and everything that she wants because he has no money. And she's like, you're enough as you are. You're more than enough. And whatever you went through made you into the person that you are in front of me. And that does it. They get to f But as far as sex scenes go in these shitty movies, not bad. Solid 6.5 out of 10, maybe seven. And there's no way in hell I could be an actor. I just, <clears throat> I'm just, I not, that professional like I wonder would I ever be not looking great next morning she's like hey you know if you want to pretend like it didn't happen we can do that like if you have regrets about it I don't I don't know how you feel about it and he's like girl no I'm making breakfast I I don't want to just do this once with you I like I want to you know be with you and I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. So they start dating and they have a lot of fun, but her boss dad is like, what I tell you about dating the, <laughs> the talent? Cause it obviously didn't work out last time. You gotta stop, you can lose focus. You have a rematch and he's not ready. Did you see his last fight? Jax's last fight? He f***ed him up. You gotta focus. So they begin to raise the intensity because the fight is getting closer. One day, a woman pro needs to practice, have a sparring, partner at the gym and Sienna goes in and she wins against her. And apparently she's the best fighter in the area. She hasn't lost anything in a very long time. And Sienna was able to beat her and she's not even a competitor, which makes her to further consider how she had never let herself believe in herself enough to be a competitor. And Jax was someone that actively discouraged her from going after that. Now that she's not with them, she's like, hey, maybe, maybe. So Sienna and Caden go to the wedding, uh, Brent's wedding, and they all have a good time until this Jack show up shirtless in the bathroom. What the fuck? I assume he's there because Beth has no boundaries and probably invited him, but he is in the bathroom when Sienna's there. He press up all up on her and is like, this wedding stuff is making me think about how you and me was supposed to be doing this. Like this should have been us. <laughs> God, and when he's trying to press up on her, in comes Caden who sees them. And honestly, it's a bit of a compromising look if you don't know better. Jack start getting in Caden's head. He's like, listen here, she's a manipulator. The only reason she's with you is to get back at me. And once the fight's over, she's gonna leave you. And he starts to try to like say, fight me. You should fight me. He's obviously drunk. That's another thing. And Caden's like, I'm not gonna fight you at a fucking wedding. The f is wrong with you? Respect the family, what the hell? And Jax is like, well, what do you know about respecting family? You killed your mama. <laughs> what? <laughs> Got tears, oh my God. It starts a fight at the wedding. Ooh, very ghetto. And Jax kicks Kaden in the ribs and elbows Brent's now husband in the face. The ghetto. Once that's over, we find out that Caden's dark past is that he used to be a partier and a drinker and he was like a shit in his words. And his mother worked three jobs to support him. And all he did was never repay her back with anything but being an asshole. And then one day he got really drunk at a party and she drove out to come get him and ended up dying in a drunk driving accident. I don't know why he thinks this is his fault unless he was drunk driving and hit her in the car 
but if so, they don't tell us in the movie. So if that's something that did happen, it happened in the book. <laughs> and the tattoo is of his mom. It's like a reminder that he's a little shit, I guess. I don't know. I'm just a piece of shit who fights in the underground to make ends meet and you shouldn't want me. Ugh. He was like, I don't want pity, especially not from you. The same pity that makes you chase after that asshole Jax. This starts a fight, you know, as much as Sienna can do, where he lets Jax's word sink in and he's like, yeah, once this fight is over, you're gonna be gone anyway. Also, <laughs> this is when we find out that apparently Caden has a broken rib from when Jax just kicked him out in the reception hall. He didn't know. <laughs> prior to this like he just found out he's like i'm still gonna do the fight which apparently is tomorrow obviously he would be in much more pain if he had a broken rib in real life but him still wanting to fight is actually not that strange to me men are weird <laughs> they are also this is his worst performance yet saying like oh my rib uh but i don't know if he's a terrible actor or if this is just a strange thing to do like a broken rib is a serious injury he could puncture something a lung but he just act like he needs to get a deep tissue but despite them having this argument she ends up getting some nudging encouragement from boss daddy who says to go and support kaden at his fight so begins the fight uh, Jax versus the dude with an untreated broken rib, or so they say, again, he looked fine to me. <laughs> but the match goes on. He does get need in those supposedly broken ribs and still miraculously is able to fight on. While watching the fight, Sienna's like, I realize that because I have Caden, we've already won. Like it doesn't even matter if we beat Jax because I have Caden or something like that. Eventually Caden somehow does win. So Jax is on the floor, knocked out and we have the celebratory kiss and she's like, oh, even though we didn't have to win, it does feel good. And while they're celebrating, Jax wakes up just to get enough energy to go and try to get a last shot at Kaden, only he misses and hits Sienna in the face, knocking her out cold. So bad that she was unconscious for like three days and Kaden's by her side through most of it until he finds out that everything's okay, like she's in the clear, she'll be all right. And at that point, he's like, all of his self-loathing that we still don't really understand much about. Like, I still don't understand any of that, but he has so much self-loathing and guilt that he ends up leaving after writing her a letter saying like, I only will make your life worse. <laughs> this shit is so unattractive, oh my God. He's like, though you thought your pussy could heal me, it can't, which is true, your pussy can't heal shit. Eventually she does wake up and Brent, his husband, boss daddy and bitch ass sister are there to welcome her into consciousness. They give her Caden's dumbass letter about how he doesn't want to hold her back, yada, 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 and she cries. Later, Jax of all people comes to the hospital for some reason where he apologizes for accidentally hitting her and possibly, you know, almost killing her, he offers her a cookie. And then he says he loves her and she's like, no, you don't. <laughs> Something is wrong with you. Something's wrong. And I'm gonna need you to figure that out. You think there's still a chance for me to be redeemed? No one is beyond redemption. Girl. But I wouldn't bet my money on it. Yeah, girl, that's that's the best answer. Yeah. Oh shit. How are you gonna eat her concussion cookies? Eventually, once she's all better, she's back at the apartment and she finds that Caden has taken all his things and left. And this is when she realized that she needs to focus on herself. She's been fighting for others. Now she wants to focus on the things that she's always wanted instead of those around her. She starts training. Her and her sister make up somehow, I don't know. She's broken up with Jax and instead of hitting her with that hot, I told you so, he was trash. She's like, I'm so proud of you. Again, I don't know. I just am an angrier person than y'all, I guess. I don't know. I guess I view a uh, family differently than maybe a lot of people do. If, if a family member do this to me, you just as shit as anybody else. I don't gotta talk to you. There's nothing about being family that gives you the right to treat me like absolute shit and I have to continue to find this endless grace for you. I don't understand that, but okay. You know what else is thicker than water? Gasoline light some bitches on fire. Anyway, she's training, focusing on herself and in walks Caden into the gym. And he's like, I'm so sorry for leaving you when you needed me most. I thought I was doing what was best for you because I didn't think that I had any 
uh, worth or some shit. I don't know. I love you and I understand if you don't forgive me. And she's like, I forgive you. And he's like, oh, I'm not gonna fight no more. I'm gonna start going to school in the fall at the school that you go to. And uh, so I'm gonna need a place to stay at for rent. I'm cynical. I would have thought he just wanted me to forgive him because he need a place to stay. <laughs> Hobosexuals will tell you anything they need to get in a house, ma'am. But the movie ends with Sienna deciding to go pro. And yeah, that's it. It ends very abruptly, actually. And uh, yeah, that's perfect addiction. I just realized, what does this movie have to do with addiction? I uh, Well, I guess her addiction to Jax, theoretically, that she had, that we don't really see much of. Maybe again, it makes more sense in the book, but um, yeah, it sucked. So it's all the tropes that you expect from YA. It's very quintessentially YA, bad boy, healing them with pussy, bad acting, all that. But with a new cuts, a new color, bad bitches to the left. I'm going to her concert this month. I'm so excited. Oh my God. I can't get through. Can I go, should I go, should I go, right. Should I go, should I go. We can be both. This is the video. Like it if you like it. Follow me on social media, Instagram and Twitter. And I will see you guys next time.